Okay, now, for those who say, no, no, Ralph, you can't be right because we know that the God of the Bible is going to conquer everything. I need to tell you what they say in their own literature. I'm going to give you two quotes, actually three quotes, two of which are from ben uh, Alice Bailey in her book. This one's on page 689 of the Externalization Hierarchy. She says, these forces of evil face sure defeat. And she's talking about the forces of evil, meaning the uh, Creator God and His uh, and Christianity. Then on page 275 of Morals and Dogma, Albert Pike spoke to the same issue. He said, Light, capital L, Light, will finally overcome darkness, good conquer evil. When he means light, he means Lucifer. Well, everything, when they talk about it, it's like looking in, 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 through a looking in a mirror. Everything is backwards. And when they talk about the light, they really mean the darkness. When they talk about the darkness, they really mean the light. When they talk about the enemy, they're talking about Christianity, the God of the Bible. They're talking about the God of the prophet Muhammad. But they actually hate Christians, don't they? That's correct. And what we saw happen in Waco, Texas, is, is like a, a walk in the park by a Sunday school class uh, in, in light of what they wish that they could do to Christians. Well, if, if, if you wouldn't mind, let's spend a minute on that. Let's talk about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, in my book, The Unseen Hand, I get into the evidence that those bombs, the atomic bombs dropped on those two cities, did not have to be dropped at all. That's correct. They were dropped on a, on a nation that wanted to surrender, and Harry Truman and Franklin Roosevelt, who died about this very same time, both knew that. And that Japan had already sued for peace, and their only condition was that they did not want the emperor thrown in jail or, or prosecuted or hurt in any way, mm -hmm. that they were willing to allow the emperor to give up his power, but they wanted the emperor to be preserved as the, as the, uh, the, the symbolic head of Japan. And we said, no, unconditional surrender. We dropped the bombs, and then we did the exact same thing that they asked for to begin with. Mm -hmm. Well, let's continue with that thought about, about the dropping of the bombs. Those bombs were dropped on Christians. Hiroshima and Nagasaki had the highest percentage of Christians in Japan. That's correct. After the bombs were... Now, that's not known by people. In, in my video, I'm going to show you an article that was published in our own local newspaper that confirmed that. Associated Press article about the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs. They were, in fact, the oldest and largest centers of Christianity in the entire nation of Japan. And after the bombs were dropped on Christians, Harry Truman became a 33rd degree Mason. He was not at the time the bombs were The great barrier to all true progress is the stranger. And the stranger is not only the individual from another country, but the person working alongside of us whom we have never known. The stranger is the neighbor next door we have never spoken to. And from this it extends on to the individual of other racial or biological groups with which we have never formed cultural bridges, and therefore whose life, work, and contribution to the common good we have totally ignored or terribly underestimated. Religion also comes strongly under this anthropological concept. And religion is going to be what the British so often refer to as the sticky wicket in most cases. Because religion differs in many ways from most other parts of the cultural motion. Uh, and it exaggerates the difficulties which we find in the other groups because religion moves around revelation. And re revelation is nearly always involved in uniqueness. And uniqueness is nearly always the basis of segregation and separation. If this means, therefore, that in order to be true to your faith, you must deny all other faiths, you put a terrible barrier in the way of cultural integration. But at the same time, you are contributing markedly to the danger of war. So we have a situation of the deepest importance. Religious isolation is very apt to cause the collapse of civilization. So where does our allegiance lie? Some persons would say, go on to the bitter end. If the world falls to pieces, I've been true to my faith. This viewpoint is still quite popular, by the way. It has many more followers than we realize. But the anthropologist, 
who is looking objectively at the problem and hopes that he is standing in a position in which he is not biased, comes to the realization or comes to the conclusion that this is too great a price to pay for religious isolation, that its moral example is more destructive than the virtue that it attains, that when we separate human beings so tremendously we should at least have extremely adequate grounds upon which to create such separation, and that in fact we have not this ground. We speak of the uniqueness of a revelation. We remove from this uniqueness proper names and nothing else, and we have nothing left that's unique. How many people realize this? It is from principally white racist Christians that we have the threat of fascism in this country. Because you see, they have a religion which is militant, which is not the religion of Jesus, which was the realization of divine sonship, but the religion about Jesus which pedestalizes him and which says only this man of all the sons of woman was divine and you had better recognize it. And so it speaks of itself as the church militant. The onward Christian soldiers marching us to war. Utterly exclusive. Convinced in advance of examining the doctrines of any other religion that is, is the top religion. And so it becomes a freak religion, just as it has made a freak of Jesus, an unnatural man. Popular Protestantism and popular Catholicism will tell you nothing about mystical religion. The message of the preacher, 52 Sundays a year, is dear people be good. We've heard it ad nauseam. I think the Bible ought to be ceremoniously and reverently burned every Easter. We need it no more because the Spirit is with us. It's a dangerous book.
That is the secret religion that brings forth this philosophy, quote, a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent, unquote. And there's the truth about how their new world utopia will be, folks. They are, in fact, they are, in fact, parasites. They are the scum of the earth. They are the people who have brought about all the misery throughout all the history of the world through their deceit, manipulations, and lies. And they fully intend to destroy all existing religions, all nation states, and they intend to enslave the rest of humanity that do not fit in with their concept of what you should be. And that means you and I, folks, are going to be slaves in the New World Order if we don't wise up.